The most documented personality in history is the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. A man 14 centuries ago. Everything about him was documented. How he would walk, how would he would speak, how he would give a sermon, how he would live amongst his companions, him going to war, him making peace treaties. Really no figure in history in that era was as documented as the Holy Prophet He's the most documented figure in history and that's truly amazing. You know one of the sermons of the Prophet, Khutbat al-Ghadir, he gave a sermon before appointing Imam Ali salam. It was a one hour sermon, one hour and probably based on my research, the longest sermon the Prophet ever gave. One hour under the hot sun in Ghadir Khum. Every word of it is documented. Do you have something similar to that? Where a figure who lived 1400 years ago gave a speech and every word of it was preserved? This is one of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That so many details about the Prophet's life survived until today. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really blessed this Muslim ummah by giving us so much information about the Prophet's life. Now when we talk about the biography of the Prophet, while there were issues and challenges, yet we can reconstruct the Prophet's life and biography in several ways. First of all, we have the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them who would give us a lot of details about the Prophet's life. Yes, we don't have a Shia biography. Why? Because at that time the Shia were heavily persecuted. They did not have the freedom to go and write about the Prophet's life. They were monitored and persecuted by the governments. So really you don't have a Shia Sira book, a Shia biography book from those times. They were not given that opportunity. Secondly, you really needed a lot of resources because you had to go travel, gather the clues, find documents. This required a lot of money and efforts and that's why you will find the major historians who wrote the biography of the Prophet, they were employed by who? By the governments of their time. Like Harun al-Rashid al-Abbasi, he was not Rashid, he was not guided. Harun al-Abbasi, this Abbasid Caliph, he would employ historians, some of them have written the biography for us. He would give them the money and the support and he would tell them, write the biography of the Prophet. Of course, according to their own perspective. But for the followers of Ahlul Bayt, the governments would persecute them. And that's why you don't have a full Shia biography of the Prophet. Because the Shias were heavily persecuted. So what we have is like a jigsaw puzzle, we have to fill in the pieces. We examine these books of seerah that we have, anything that's compatible with the Qur'an, with the ahadith of Ahlul Bayt, with the character of the Prophet, we accept. Because the Prophet, he himself says in a number of hadiths, he says, whatever you hear about me, if it's compatible with the book of God, accept it. If it's not, then reject it. And he warned, the Prophet peace be upon him, in our hadith books, even the Sunni hadith books, there are hadiths that say the Prophet warned, he forewarned that after me so many liars will come, so many liars will come and they will forge hadiths, so be careful. Ibn Abbas, he has an interesting hadith, he says if you ever hear me, talking about the Prophet and giving you details. If you find that it contradicts the principles of the Qur'an and it's something that people find unacceptable, then know that I am lying. In other words, he's telling us that there's nothing about the Prophet's life that's immoral, that's unacceptable to society. So if you find a hadith that is difficult for society to accept, it's defaming the Prophet, it's contradicting the principles of Qur'an, automatically know that what? This is a false hadith. So the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, they really contributed to giving us a picture of the Prophet's life. But we have to fill in the pieces. It's a, it's a big puzzle, 
We have to solve the puzzle. We have to look at every segment of the Prophet's life. First see what exists in these biographies. And then we have to see, is this contradictory or not? Does this, does this fit with the Quran or not? Does this fit with the personality of the Prophet or not? That gives us a better understanding of the Prophet's life. Now today, today there are Shia biography books, today. But we don't have any early sources. What we have is basically the Quran, the verses of the Quran, the tafsir, the ahadith of Ahlul Bayt, and these sirah books. You put them all together and you get a biography book. The most comprehensive biography book that we have today is As Sahih min Sirat al Nabi. It's 35 volumes by, a, by a Sayyid Ja'far al Amili. It's 35 volu volumes on the life of the Prophet. So this is what he does in this book and a lot of what we will discuss will be based on this book. It's in Arabic, as sahih min sirat al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. So what's authentic from the seerah of the Prophet? Um, this was written in the last decade. This is recent, he's still alive. The author is still alive. Say Ja'far al-Amili, he lives in Lebanon. Say Ja'far Murtala al-Amili, yes. He's also known as a Sayyid Ja'far Murtala. Uh, no, this has not been translated into English. It should be because it's a great work. It's full of sources, references. So he starts from day one. He analyzes the Prophet's life. What does Ibn Ishaq say? What does Ibn Hisham say? The Quran, the Ahadith of Ahlul Bayt. And he gives us an analysis about that event and that stage in the Prophet's life. So this is the most comprehensive work that we have. We have some small biographies here and there, but this is 35 volumes, so it's huge. And there's a lot of analysis in it.